I'm very happy to open this webinar and uh, thank everyone for taking the time to participate, the participants and of course our speakers. In the recent years, uh, Hanita Lenses has been completely focused on developing advanced premium technologies. We believe that it, uh, this is exactly what our customers expect. Today, we are very proud to present our patent pending new generation IOL, the intensity. Our speakers for today will be Dr. Jean-Pierre Rosenbaum. He will be talking about the technology behind intensity. Professor Eud Astia will speak about his study and the clinical results. And Dr. Pierre Bouchou will speak, will speak about the patient expectation versus intensity values. At the end of this, these three presentations, our R&D team, Iman Khouri, which developed the intensity lens, and um, <clears throat> Alex Mailarov will both, he's the head of R&D, he, they will both give answers to your questions. In order to ask these questions, you will find at the bottom of your screen this line. And over here, this icon will help you to ask your questions. You can push the button, ask the questions, and at the end of these three presentations, they will be able to reply to your questions. I'm sure we will not be able to answer everything, but we'll try to make the best. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And we will start, as I said, with Dr. Jean-Pierre Rosenbaum. The stage is yours. I am very pleased to be with you and to present, uh, to participate to this uh, presentation, uh, which is a uh, in fact, an international presentation uh, around this uh, uh, new lens, uh, which is a, a very new concept of multifocal diffractive uh, IOL. So in France, uh, we began the clinical evaluation of intensity IOL, and uh, our first results were, uh, were excellent. Unfortunately, we had to stop uh, these trials because we had COVID uh, uh, crisis, but uh, we will go on as soon as uh, it will be possible in the next, uh, in the next two weeks. So the first message I would like to send you is uh, that the only way to obtain distance intermediate and near vision is, is to have diffractive IOL. If you uh, inject uh, uh, EDOF, you will have a good uh, distance vision and good intermediate vision, but the, the only way to obtain all this distance intermediate is in near vision is diffractive IOL. Uh, diffractive is a complex system. We have, you have to understand that uh, uh, in diffraction, uh, on each part, on each point, a part of the light uh, will not be deviated. It, uh, we call it order zero and it corresponds at the refractive effect of the lens. For example, if you have IOL uh, 22 dioptry, the order zero will correspond to uh, 22 dioptries power. A part of the light is deviated in orders in different directions called orders. We have order one, two, three, four, and so on. And uh, in IOL optics, we use order one and order two. Uh, a part of energy is lost uh, uh, there are orders over three. And we try to, uh, to limit uh, the energy loss to obtain the best results. Uh, multifoc uh, multifocal diffractive IOL, uh, we need uh, in trifocal or more to have several diffractive gratings. And so we have uh, constructive and destructive indifferences. To avoid uh, energy loss, we have to use constructive indifferences but we have, of course, angular constraints, which conduct the uh, concept of the EOI, IOL design. And uh, so these uh, angular constraints explain why uh, in the trifocal, the classical trifocal IOL, the intermediate distances is the double of near distances. Uh, as you can see in fine vision, in AT 
Ateliza Ate from Zeiss and all other. Even, even in the new uh, Triumph uh, BVI profile, uh, in which we, we can observe that uh, near, uh, near vision is plus 3.5 dioptrie and intermediate vision is 1.75. Um, now let's see the specification of uh, the IOL we are going to speak about, uh, its intensity. Its intensity has a diffractive area, 5.2 millimeter, uh, with spherical aberration, minus 0.13. Uh, I will say that the, the diffractive uh, surface is at the post posterior face of the lens. The intensity is a totally innovative concept. It has been created to, uh, it has been designed to create a new concept to obtain uh, energy gain, 93.5% of energy, uh, which is the most important of the market, and also to break free the physical constriction of where focal point are. How is it possible? It's possible by use of iterative algorithm to obtain optimal profile. In fact, the focal points are predefined with energy degree we want to have in different, in different distance, in different focus, and in different light energy. The uh, system is called uh, DLU, uh, DLU, Dynamic Light Utilization. And uh, this, uh, this conduct to obtain this uh, profile uh, of the intensity in which we can see, uh, we can see a smooth uh, shape with nine steps uh, around a central ring uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. This creates a continuous uh, full range vision and the steps height will vary uh, along the lens radius to optimize energy in the different light condition. As we see, we have, we distinguish three main zones uh, which allow better performances for different pupil size. The special division, uh, the, speci the special division of the zones help to get higher MTA value at far vision for large pupil, and this is very useful in driving, in driving night condition. We can see now, it's very interesting to, to see the repartition, the light repartition is this lens, and it, this is total, totally new. We have equivalent of five foci, uh, which permit to obtain highly quality of vision in every distances. It's important to understand that order are symmetrically distributed around order zero. You can see 80 centimeters, order zero, which represents the refractive effect of the lens. At the beginning, I to, I've told you, uh, if uh, power is 22 dioptries, uh, the order zero will be equivalent of 22 dioptries, and this lens is centered on the intermediate uh, vision. But the algorithm permits to, uh, to conserve a very good, uh, a very good quantity of energy in every distance, in distance, uh, in uh, distance vision, in far vision, in near vision, and also we have two more foci in uh, distance uh, intermediate vision and also in intermediate near vision. Near vision. This permits to obtain this uh, very good uh, MTF uh, response and uh, as we can see the repartition in uh, all the distances with a, a percentage of energy uh, very important in far intermediate and near and also in far, in far intermediate and near intermediate vision. And this is possible, all this is possible uh, to obtain this five focus because uh, this IOL is the IOL of the market will keep more energy with 93.5% uh, of energy and only 6.5 energy lost. 
thank you uh, very much. And uh, uh, it's now a great pleasure for me uh, to give to Professor Eudacia the floor. He has conducted trial on intensity IOL. He's going to give us the results of his study. And I will talk about uh, my clinical experience with the first experience with uh, uh, these uh, lenses. Uh, these are my disclosure. I would like to acknowledge that I'm a consultant to Hanita Lenses, and this is on other companies which are not related uh, to this presentation. So we uh, did uh, our clinical study, the first uh, clinical study, and our objective, the primary goal was to evaluate uh, the vision, both monocular and binocular, far, intermediate, and uh, near vision of the intensity lens. And as the secondary goals to measure the defocus curves and the patient satisfaction by a questionnaire. This is a prospective single arm, single center, single surgeon, an open label study, uh, which was uh, done to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the lens. The population was just simple patients who so require cataract surgery and then no other uh, ocular pathologies. So the inclusion criteria included uh, patients aged 45 to 75, which are pretty young. Our, our, um, the mean average uh, age of a patient doing cataract surgery is about 75, so it's a bit uh, younger patients, which uh, can benefit more. We desire to have a bilateral cataract surgery, normal axial lengths, normal K readings, and astigmatism no more than 0.75. We did not use toric lenses. Patients were motivated and no other retina or any other ocular pathologies. So far, uh, the, the study was designed to have 20 patients and 40 eyes. So far, we had uh, 17. We have now even uh, uh, more. Uh, we did just uh, this week two more uh, uh, patients. So we have just a little, little bit more than what we can see here. But altogether, we had uh, uh, 17 patients and most of them uh, we're done with both eyes. We still have some more to go. Uh, now we are facing the coronavirus crisis, so it may take some time, but we are on the way to finish. Uh, uh, look at this number, one month, both eyes. We have uh, 11, and we will come back to this number again later on. Spherical equivalent of uh, these patients was uh, slightly myopic, my, minus 0.25. They had uh, uh, not the best vision uh, with a normal K reading, cylinder 0.5, and normal axial lengths. Now, this is what we can see during uh, surgery. And what is special in this surgery is that there is nothing special. This is a routine, simple surgery like any other uh, operation. The platform is that of the uh, sea lens using the regular cartridge. It can come also preloaded. You can see on the background that I'm, I like to use anterior chamber maintainer, but this is definitely nothing to do with this lens. And that lens, a lens is advanced and injected into the eye using the uh, Hanita Visco uh, of uh, 1.8. So this is a routine surgery, routine implantation, nothing really special. It's centralized uh, uh, very nicely, quite easily. And this is at the end of surgery. The lens is well centered. We have experience with so many thousands of, uh, of these lenses. And this is the second one, one more eye with a, a contact at the end. This is a lens we can see the diffractive circles and after implantation, a very, a very simple routine cataract surgery with this lens and the platform that we are using. We also use the A constant as we uh, know is effective for the C lens, which is 118 uh, to 119. Uh, uh, 118.8 to 118.9, and this is uh, um, what we use uh, for all the lenses. This is what the lenses look uh, after three months, routine, regular surgery. So now let's look at the, at the performance of this lens. Fair view lens, the average was min minus uh, 0.23. We targeted to minus 0.15, which means what it was almost to the spot, 0 0.08 difference. So we believe that the A constant is correct and we can continue with this A constant of 118.8. What is the visual performance? The uncorrected distance, 6 over 6.69, intermediate, 6, 7.9, and near, 6, 4. 
Now, this is something special, and I would like to elaborate about this new vision uh, uh, even more. These are the, uh, the corrected vision, which makes it even better. This is a 6-6 six, six line, so everything below is better than 6-6 six, six and above is a bit less. So the distance was better than 6-6, six, six, uh, intermediate 6-7.5, and near again 6-3. Uh, uh, and this is corrected on both eyes, which make it even better. Low number of cases, but still distance 6-5, intermediate 6-6, six, six, and near 6-3. Six, now this is something which is very unique, and, and I've done many hundreds of uh, uh, multifocal, trifocal lenses of uh, uh, various companies. And one major problem with all of these uh, lenses is the new vision. Patients are not very happy with the new vision as they complain about this new vision. And in this lens was something which was very, very unique that the, v the new vision was exceptional. It probably gained more energy than any other lens, probably because of the specific design of the lens in which the order zero is not a distance, but on the intermediate, so there is no more energy goes to the near vision. This is a defocus curve. The blue line is uh, uh, one eye, the um, red line is two eyes. This is a 6-6, six, six. so everything that is above this line is better than 6-6. Six, six. So as we can see from 40 centimeters up to six meters and more, the line of both eyes is higher than 6-6. Six, six which is an excellent performance and it's also very flat, so it works at all distances uh, almost e equally well. Contrast sensitivity, everything that is within here in the white line, white area, this is a normal. So as we see, photopic and mesopic are both inside and all normal looking at all range of uh, spatial frequency of three to 18. What about the questionnaire? We have results of uh, only uh, 11 eyes. So there were questions about driving uh, day, night, cooking, and so on. There was two special questions which require very high performance. And this is this question here, which is knitting and sewing, which is very delicate to uh, uh, thread a suture right through the, the hole of, um, of a needle. And this uh, reading very small letter like IFU in uh, instructions for use of medications. So these are very demanding questions. As we can see for most, most questions, there was no difficulty. And also, also for this very high uh, um, task, I, I require uh, more skills. Then we can see that it was just slightly below the maximum. So this lens really did very, very nicely. Difficulty in color perception, depth perception, even driving at night or seeing at night was not uh, a, a significant uh, problem, also no diplopia. The only two things is these two, is the glare and, and hello, which uh, some of the patients did, did notice. And we, uh, we noticed it again and again, when you ask the patient, do you have any problem? He says, not real pro problems. When you ask if do you have glare or hellos, the patient said, okay, now that you're asking, then I may see it from time to time. And time works. I mean, the, the, the glare and the hello goes down, down with time. No adaptation really works. It's not a miss. And oftentimes when you do the second eye, patients say that now with the second eye, I see the glare and hello that I used to see in my first eye and they are gone. Physics, physics didn't change. It's the same physics on both sides. The fact that he sees now in the second eye what he did see in the past in the first eye, this is uh, actually the definition of neuroadaptation and how the patients get better for about uh, two to three months. The satisfaction uh, in regard to uh, uh, having glasses, glasses for distance, intermediate, near, they never use all these patients. Still, this is uh, more numbers. And uh, as for are they happy with the results? Most of them, nine of the, of the 11 are very satisfied, two were satisfied. And uh, would you choose it again? All of them said, yes, they will do it, choose it again. So just to summarize, this is a very uh, promising new design of a lens. It provides very good and very nice uh, uh, spec spectacle uh, independence in these pseudophagic patients. And they are very happy. And again, I would like to emphasize two things. One, near vision is exceptional. 
as compared to other uh, multifocal lenses. And the second eye, that this is only a, a small number of cases, so we uh, still need to see what will be in the future. But these initial results are excellent. The, the focus curve is almost ideal. Visual acuity is uh, 6 6 in all ranges. Patients are happy, and uh, I must say that as a surgeon, I'm also very happy. We still need to look at the bigger numbers and to, to, to do some fine tuning. A constants probably is correct, as I mentioned uh, earlier in our, uh, my presentation. So I would like to congratulate uh, Hanita Lenses for a very nice lens, and I think this is a, a very promising lens. And it's now my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Pierre Bouchot, who will talk about patient expectations versus uh, intensity values. Thank you uh, very much. Professor Asia, we have two questions from the crowd uh, regarding your presentation. Would you like to answer uh, right now or at the end? Uh, anytime, as, as, as you like. Okay, so the first question uh, was, did you check effect of glares on uh, mesopic contrast? Uh, yes, I think I, I, um, we show it in the No, we, we measure contrast sensitivity. As for the glare in mesopic uh, contrast, uh, I'm not sure that we had both. We have either glare or, or contrast sensitivity, but I'm not sure that we did both of them at the same time. We, we had a, a contrast sensitivity in mesopic conditions, one of the graphs that you have showed, yes. A second question from the same uh, doctor, Smita Shah, I think it's from India. Uh, did you compare with previous available multifocal IOL in respect to contrast? Um, well, I use so far, uh, um, I mainly use uh, uh, the physio lenses, but I also use the panoptics, I use the size. Uh, I would say since our numbers are, are small, like I would not say better, but uh, they're definitely not inferior. So I probably, it's at, at least comparable. But Thank we need you very much. Numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Pierre Boucher, the stage. I will uh, continue this uh, nice web uh, webinar by the, the to, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to, to explain what is the position of uh, this IOL on, on the market. Because you know, this is my financial disclosure, that today we use a lot of, uh, of uh, IOL for many uh, conditions. The first one is the cataract. And uh, many patients want uh, to reach uh, presbyopia correction at the same time today. It's a current surgery. Patients trust a lot in this surgery. It's uh, very high safety. And the uh, patient wants to have a good quality of vision and want to take care of their uh, presbyopia in the same time. So the cataract, it's a, a real opportunity for them to become free of glasses. This is for the cataract patients. And we have also the patients who are coming uh, to see you for the presbyopia. They want to uh, be free of glasses. They don't want to continue to be presbyopia people. And uh, the number of cases are increasing every, every year. But uh, this kind of patients have a, long, uh, a lot of high expectations. Uh, they want a safe procedure and they want a quality of vision and it's always the same word. Quality of vision, they, they want a low rate of disturbance. They accept the surgery, they want a surgery, but they want a quality of vision. So he, they want to be able to see far, near, and also now intermediate because the way of life change and they use a lot of a laptop, they use a mobile phone, and they don't want only to be able to read a newspaper, they want a continuous vision, they want to be able to, uh, to see in the night, to drive, and uh, we need, of course, new IOL with a low rate of glare and uh, ILOs and dysphotopsia, of course. It was uh, in the mind of the people, the, the, this kind of, um, of, of things, uh, because in the past, uh, IOL provide uh, a lot of uh, disturbance for uh, presbyopia correction. But at the moment, everything changed. Of course, uh, you can see, for example, uh, with a pinhole target, the PSF of the intensity and the panoptics. We have always some halos with diffractive uh, IOL, but today uh, the halos are less than before. 
because of the quality of optics, because of the quality of the surgery, and because of the quality of the calculation of the power of the lens. So with everything, we can reach a very good result. For example, we can compare uh, different uh, diffractive IOL, like Teresa from Zeiss, Pan Vision from Fizol, Pan Optics from Alcon, and Intensity. And if you use US target force, you can uh, measure the quality of vision in distance, intermediate, and near. As you can see with the red, uh, red bar, the quality is very good. And uh, if you uh, can compare those IOL, you can see that the intensity is uh, one of the best on, the, on, this, uh, on this kind of uh, analysis. And uh, it's uh, this for two millimeters filters, but with uh, four, 0.5 pupil millimeters, you have also a good distance vision. That's not, uh, it's very important, but not so bad. And for intermediate and uh, near, it's very correct. So the, the quality of vision increased with the new uh, generation of IOL. And now we can offer to our patients this kind of the surgery with not too much problem. Always patients expect this independence of glasses and the intensity with uh, the high uh, level of uh, intensity of the light, 93.5, it's very important, a lot this. We saw a few minutes uh, before with uh, Dr. Rosenbaum, the, the technology of uh, the, the optics, and uh, that explained that we can propose, uh, suggest this kind of, uh, of IOL for young people in the, the presbyopia collection. And uh, also we have to keep in mind that emetropic patients are always uh, very um, uh, expecting a very, very good uh, distance vision. And that's uh, important. So on the market today, all new implants, diffractive claim for more or less for, for head of label or continuous vision. Is it a marketing effect? More or less. In fact, we need today uh, IOL matching with the patient's expectation. If you have a pure head off, of course, you have a low disturbance, but the limitation for near vision is important and we can't predict the, the vision. But with the new diffractive refractive optics, we can have a very reliable uh, result. Intensity of, uh, by uh, Anita, you, the, the, the aim of the presentation today, and we can compare this IOL with the different, with the new. Uh, diffractive IOL in the market, and we have the Synergy from Johnson Johnson, for example, the new Fine Vision Triumph from Physiol, and the Panoptics Alcon. The, the second, the, the intensity and the Synergy provide a good continuous uh, of vision, and it's, uh, I think, a plus for, for the patients, uh, because they don't need to adapt their position to, uh, to, uh, to see the, the laptop or uh, to see the, the screen of uh, the computer. Uh, with a true focal or quadrifocal, you have a good vision in, uh, for near, of course, for intermediate and for distance, but sometimes patients need to adapt the position to find uh, the very uh, more, the, the more comfortable position for the intermediate vision. And we have not this with the new lens like intensity. I, uh, I can show you some uh, defocus curves and I can compare, this is a personal uh, defocus curves for synergy, panoptics and intensity. And you can see that all this, uh, all those new IOL reach a very high quality of vision. But uh, the intensity is a little bit more effective for near vision and the curve is really, really very flat. And it's a very uh, impressive. So, and with this new dynamic light utilization, we have less fatigue effect, of course, less loss of contrast, and a good far and near vision with a continuous vision. This is very important to know because when you want to, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to make the choice for, for your patient, you have to think with uh, the, the quality of vision and also you have to think to uh, suggest uh, an IOL uh, to be able to fit to every style of life. You don't have to think, oh, these patients uh, need more reading uh, vision. This one need more distance vision. And the other one need uh, intermediate vision. No, with intensity, you are able to provide 
all, uh, all distance vision with a high quality. And I think it's a very convenient for the surgeon and it's very safe for the patients. So intensity in our new practice, because of course uh, our uh, number of people uh, with this uh, intensity is not uh, very uh, important at uh, this day because of the COVID, but uh, there is a low rate of disturbance and the predictability and the reliability of the diffractive IOL is uh, present and it fits to all people. So we speak about uh, we spoke about that a few minutes ago. It's a CELUP platform, very uh, very easy to use, very uh, good centration and very good stability, and uh, we can use and uh, you can inject this IOL through a 1.7 millimeters incision. It was very easy to inject. Okay, very easy to put uh, in the cartridge. It's a C-loop uh, IOL in the, uh, in the cartridge before moving, you can see the, the rings, you can see the haptics very easily. And uh, it's a very, uh, classical uh, cartridge, very easy to, uh, to put. You have to take care of the haptics, of course. And in routine, you can inject this IOL through a very small incision. You will see it, I think. You can check also the position of the IOL in the cartridge. It's very important to be set with uh, the haptics. You can charge and download at the end of the cartridge. And then with the classical injector, you can throw a 1.7 millimeters incision with wound assist injection. As you can see, it's very easy, very safe, and the UL is coming in the bag. So, as a conclusion, we have a very good uh, visual outcome with uh, our cases, of course. We have a low rate of this photopsia, very rare halos. Our patients are very happy and they are all always waiting for the surgery for the second eyes because unfortunately, because of the COVID, we had to, uh, to, uh, to delay it. So it's, so it's a very promising IOL. We have uh, excellent early results also. Optic and technology fits to all patients' expectations and that's very, very important. And I think it's a new paradigm for the presbyopia correction. So thank you very much and special thanks to Anita's team for this uh, excellent uh, organization. And I uh, give back the, to, uh, to Mikhail to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Asia. Thank you, Dr. Bouchou. And thank you, Dr. Jean-Pierre Rosenbaum. Uh, I would like to answer some of the questions. We were asked many questions. We will not be able to uh, allow all the answers right now, but we've chosen uh, two or three, uh, we have uh, raised hands. We'll try to first answer the questions. Uh, Iman, the developer of the lens, will join us by a video. Hi, Hello, Iman. Good evening, hi. Uh, I can, uh, you can all open your videos, the uh, presenters, if you'd like to join us. Uh, the, first questions we, the first question we were asked is what makes it possible to achieve such high light efficiency? Uh, in one presentation, it was shown the uh, high efficiency and they would like to know how it was possible to maintain. Actually, what enables us to do that is using uh, the a new technology, the DLU technology that was presented in the one of the presentations, the dynamic light, light technology. It is uh, different from the other standard uh, lenses it's an iterative algorithm which uh, we define the desired energy distribution between the foci and the algorithm runs hundreds of times until we reach the uh, target uh, distribution. In this method, we get a very special uh, profile with smooth steps that gives us this maximal light uh, optimization. And in, uh, in addition, as the uh, Professor Asia uh, mentioned, 
if we have the zero order in the intermediate, this also gives us uh, the maximum light uh, uh, energy utilization. Thank you very much. A uh, second question we have here is, uh, does intensity have apodization? Okay, uh, it's a very good question. It doesn't have a, a opposition in the standard meaning of the word, like uh, the decreasing of the energy from, cent uh, from center to periphery, uh, because it, has, uh, it doesn't have a standard uh, surface shape. But we have optimiza optimization for different pu pupil sizes uh, by dividing the lens into three zones uh, uh, with different uh, light distribution at each zone. And combined together, we get the performance a maximum performance for each uh, pupil. Thank you. Um, one more question we have. Uh, some of the questions are anonymous, so I'm not uh, uh, reading the, the doctor's name. We have a, a non-anonymous question from uh, Dr. Herman Martinez Osario. I hope I said it correctly. Uh, what is the target of the IOL calculation, PLANO, plus 0 0.5? Um, there's no a uh, final answer for that yet. Uh, currently, we recommend uh, using the targeted refraction around minus uh, 0 0.1, uh, but this is not final. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Iman. It, it was, I, I, told, I think it was a really interesting presentation with a, a presentation of um, uh, of all the uh, all the qualities of uh, this uh, new IOLs and uh, uh, and uh, we uh, were waiting uh, the end of the confinement to uh, go on uh, on the on the trial because we the first results and uh, I, I had uh, I had video of some patients I operate some operate, some patients I've operated and uh, and results are very they are very very satisfied. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, we will uh, increase uh, uh, quickly the numbers of per patient operated with uh, with this lens because uh, I am very uh, no. What, what is interesting uh, is to be in confidence with uh, some some uh, when we use a, a multifocal IOL. Uh, almost when uh, it's a new technology. The, uh, you know, uh, I, I spoke. I, I spoken a, a few one months ago in Elat with uh, Eudasia, and uh, he has explained to me that we had a very good intermediate and near vision. And when I began to operate my patients, I observed, of course, that, that very good uh, intermediate and near vision. But they have also, uh, as he, everybody, as uh, Eud has told us, that they have good, uh, very good uh, near, uh, distance vision uh, also. And it was a good surprise. Also, what I would wanted to say in the uh, not many uh, numerous uh, patients I've, I've operated, but uh, I, uh, I observed that uh, uh, um, in post-op, uh, uh, when we do uh, autorefractometer, we obtain minus uh, minus 0.5 or 0.75. And uh, I saw at the first time, I saw, yes, I will have a, Good near vision, and but and probably uh, uh, distance vision will be low, and uh, it was not the case. Is it was the case because patient uh, we had an autorefractometer minus 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.75, and but patient have good vision. So uh, what we obtain in uh, autorefractometer uh, doesn't is not uh, the real uh, power of uh, post -op, uh, of, of post op results. And uh, I think that for the next uh, next for the next I, I, IOL, I will uh, I will uh, operate uh, in uh, next week in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, the target will be uh, plus 0.1 or plus 0.2. Uh, I think I do. I don't know if, uh, if it's a it's a good uh, idea, but I think I will try to to show the, this. Uh, uh, target. If I may add something uh, to this uh, calculation of, uh, of, uh, of the A constant, in the early days of uh, multifocal lenses, we were um, told that we should aim to first plus 0 0.15, 0 0.25, or, or to emetropia. 
And then, I mean, this time we just gradually, uh, gradually change to the first minus. And in these cases of uh, uh, the intensity lens, we went to the first minus, 0 0.1, 0 0.115, 0 0.2. And I think that we are correct. This is, this is what we should do. We should target emetropia and just a little bit to the, to the first minus. It also may help the intermediate and the mirror, and it does not compromise the, the distance the vision. So if you ask me what I would choose for, for uh, distance, I would go to straight emetropia or, 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 or the first minus uh, in the choices. Uh, as for this, uh, how do we define this lens? We usually define multifocal lenses as uh, bifocals or trifocals or extended depth of focus. But this is a, a, actually, it's a, it's a new, new definition for this lens because it is pentafoci or polyfoci because it's not just three definite foci, but there are also in-betweens. So it is more kind of, a, of extended from distance to near in all, uh, in, uh, in all foci so I believe that polyfocal or multifocal is, uh, uh, would be the good definition and not just uh, trifocal. And I believe that this is because of the specific design. The idea to target uh, order zero at intermediate apparently was a good choice. So we can spread the light from intermediate to the, to the far and to the near on both sides and get the advantage mm -hmm. on both because again, Near vision is a very common complaint in multifocal lenses. And I, uh, at least in this number of cases that we did, but it's all uh, uh, almost uh, 30 eyes or 40 eyes that we are, almost 40 eyes that we do, um, near vision is apparently uh, exceptionally good. Thank you very much to the participants and uh, to the panelists that uh, managed to join us today. Uh, if we didn't answer some of the questions is because the time is limited. Uh, I suggest that you either contact us via our website or our or your distributor in your uh, country, and we will be more than happy to answer all the questions related to this new and a very exciting product. Thank you very much. <laughs>